Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. My name is Greg Deckler and I am back from San Antonio. Uh, I have a lot of uh, a blog, uh, video ideas that I want to get done. Um, but my first one is I want to revisit this October 2024 update to Power BI. <clears throat> I realize I already made a, a video kind of bagging on this whole um, list slicer thing. And I've seen some of the posts on LinkedIn that are kind of in the similar vein. It's like, why are people promoting this? Um, and, it, and as I've had a chance to kind of get back and digest this Power BI update, you know, I'm not sure I would give it a passing grade, but I have to give it some credit that it is better than maybe the last year and a half worth of uh, updates that have that have been released for Power BI. Um, and I do that not for any of the reasons why anybody seems to be promoting this, this feature or this update, right, with the list slicer, that's garbage. Um, the other one that they, that they that they want to promote is I think it's this info view data analysis expressions, which I mean, hooray, we have four functions, but it does solve the problem, right? This this particular problem that I've complained about before, which is that you can use these things in DAX query view, but you can't create a table based upon it. Well, you can with the view functions. So with the view functions, which you have a grand total, right? You can use, let me zoom in here, info.view.measures, right? And return an actual table, which is great because you can't do that for whatever stupid reason, right? You can't do that with any of the other info functions, right? It just gives you an error. Um, but you can use them in, like here, if I use info.measures and I return that and run it, right? You get, you can use it here. You can also use u.measures, right? You can use that also here. So again, I don't, not sure why they've made this distinction that view measures are allowed to re return a table within DAX table and other things are not. They look pretty damn similar as far as what they return uh, in DAX query view, still a table, people. Um, but it is interesting that they actually, the view functions actually provide a lot less functionality or a lot less information, right? So here's all the information you get back using uh, info.measures. Um, and here's what you get back using uh, info.view.measures. You can see there's quite a bit of difference. Uh, you, for In particular, you don't get back modified time, either one of them, uh, so which kind of kind of important for like, you know, version control, stuff like that, but you know, whatever. You know, just don't give us that functionality, Microsoft. Um, that's not what I'm here to talk about. Uh, let's see, let's get back on track here. And okay, that's not it. That's checking out the ideas, which is a whole other topic that I want to do as well. The ideas site's just jacked, um, in my opinion. But no, what I want to talk about, though, I think one of the things that I think I find very interesting is this Azure Map Update data bound reference layers. So data bound reference layers, I haven't got a chance to play with these yet, but they look like they're going to solve a lot of holes, um, get us back to like shape map uh, visuals and solve a lot of kind of map mapping visuals, um, consolidate all of that. Um, so I think I think this looks very cool as far as a feature. This would be one of my standouts. Um, and the other one that I, just, I can't believe has been getting no press. And I usually is chew, you know, eh, you know, preview features. But this value filter behavior, this is this is this kills the devil in my opinion, right? <laughs> or at least that we will eventually slay the devil. Uh, and the devil being auto exist. Right, so work with value filter here. So what this does, this allows you to turn off auto exist is what it does, um, which is amazing in my opinion, because I never thought in a million years, Microsoft would ever give us the option to turn off auto exist um, from Power BI desktop, right? Um, and so this also even you know gives me a little bit of hope that maybe one of these times they're gonna give us the ability to switch up how um how power bi uses and from the desktop allows us to choose our semantic model as far as whether it's case insensitive or not case insensitive this that would be a that would be the other huge boon in my opinion um if they allow us to control that from power bi desktop versus having to go into tabular editor or you know some other means to be able to turn that sort of stuff off um anyway so this is a huge thing in my opinion and let me show you how this works i created Created a uh, this one right here. So I recreated the example from the the blog article, um, and as you can see, this is all the information, right? So I got some 2022 stuff. It's all black, 
I've got some 2023 stuff that includes blue, red, and black items. And then I've got 2024 items that include only blue and black items. All right, so if I pick uh, red and I pick blue, right, you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six items from both 2023 and 2024. And then my, my calculations that I have here, so number of products, right? Just a simple count rows, number of products count rows. And then I have number of products all year. So I, this one does a calculate num products all catalog year, okay? So now if I pick 2023, you can say that this is, and now what I've done is I've disabled this slicer from affecting this table visual. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this should simulate what this all function should be doing, right? And I have, I have number of products all years is six, number of products is four. But if I select 2024, number of products is two, and number of products all years is five, right? So why did this change to five? Well, it's because of auto exist. And what happens is, is that because the unique combination of 2024 and red do not appear in the table, right? Then auto exist basically throws that throws that aside and will not will not calculate that, right? So even though it should be six, it throws out you know the red in 2024 and that. Oh, that doesn't exist. So it throws the red out entirely, and you get back, you know, only your twenty, only your blue stuff. Um, so stupid behavior, right? Um, and probably there's a lot of reports out there that are wrong and don't even realize it because of this stupid behavior. Um, and it all exists because they have two slicers here that are sitting, that are slicing the, the same table. It's two slicers on the same table, two filters going one, you know, going against the same table, um, and that's what causes auto exist to kick in and screw everything up. Um, it's been a problem. I complained about it for years, um, and Microsoft done absolute zero to fix it. Um, finally, they have apparently, or they're planning to, or it's in preview. So how you get to this, right, is you go to your your model, go to your semantic model, and then you'll see this value filter behavior. So you have to be at the semantic model level, right? You have to click on this, and then you click on, then you have the value auto filter behavior. So you can change that to independent versus automatic. And now look at that, six, right? The right answer, six. So that's how you switch that up. So there's actually three settings that go through it in the, they go through it in the um, in the article. They have automatic is the default, right? Where it auto exists and it sucks or independent. So they, sh they should call this the devil. And then they should call this, you know, like, you know, intelligent and, and coalesce. I don't even know. I didn't even do enough research into it to know what coalesce means, but stupid and smart, right? Those should be the labels here, um, but they're not because Microsoft's bland like that. So in my opinion, everyone, everyone should add this to, like if you have a template for your PBX, I know Brian Julius, I'm looking at you, man. Um, everyone that has a template for like a starting place for your Power BI reports, like, you know, the open this PBX, save it as something else and go from there so you can turn off all the things that annoy you, like, Auto time intelligence and all this stuff. This, this you need to add this um, to to that, in my opinion. Although maybe not until it gets out of preview, right? Because who knows um, what this might screw up. And I have not done any kind of performance testing with this. Um, I really don't think that in the grand scheme of things that this is going to have really much of an impact at all on performance overall. Um, which I think is why Microsoft implemented it originally. Um, which also speaks to why it's stupid um, and you know it's meaningless in the grand scheme of things. I don't think it's really going to have that much of an impact on the vast, vast, vast majority of models, like 99.9% .9 of models. It won't make it one hill of beans difference in terms of performance if this is automatic or independent. Maybe I'm wrong, um, but I'm pretty sure I'm right on that one. So and now it's not perfect. Um, I'll show you an example. This is actually something I'm working, uh, I was working on with my book. Uh, Dax for Humans, the one that's being self-written through Patre Patreon, um, and you know having collaboration. There's a big discussion about it right now going on on my Patreon about this. But let me find let me find this. So here I was trying to go through a simple like running total, trying to explain the difference between all and all selected, if you will. Um, and so the way I did that was I said, okay, we have our you know base table. We got our date. Uh, we've got a running total cost right where I have filter all table, blah, blah, table date, less than max date, right? Simple, no calculator running total. And then I've got one that is all selected. 
So instead of all, I use all selected. And what I was trying to show um, is that, you know, hey, when everything's selected, you know, both of these lines, I also have one for calculate, but ignore that. Um, all these lines are identical, right? They all match up. But if I, and let me actually take the calculate one out of there. So it's just running cost, total cost, and running total cost selected. I was doing, I put the calculate one in there because I was trying to experiment. Well, maybe it'll work if I use calculate uh, because calculate special. Um, anyway, but now if I select banana, right? So if I, there's my running total, and that's correct. I select banana though. See how it only gets two dates here? So, I mean, ideally, right, what you would like to have is that the running total cost, right, the one with using all would be exactly the same as if, as this, right? And then the running total cost selected would be more of the two dates, right? And it's only the banana stuff. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. Um, and this is right now, it's set to automatic. But if I set this to, I don't know why I'm going there. Go over here, set this to independent like I did before. I come back, to, it's the same thing. Um, so why is it the same thing? Well, because the banana um, is selecting only the banana rows. There's only two banana rows. You can see this in grapefruit. There's only one grapefruit row. There's only two banana rows, right? And it's January 10th and January 2nd. Um, but ideally, right, you would want this to look like this, you know, the all the all version of it to look like this, and the all selected would just be, you know, a one point or a straight line like this, ideally. So obviously, in my opinion on that, it's it's an it's an auto exist ish like kind of kind of issue, where because I'm picking pickle and I have my date um, in this table, it filters it down to just these two dates. Now. The all, right, when the all kicks in, it calculates for those two dates, it calculates all the products, whereas this one only calculates for pickle in this case, only the pickle rows. Um, but it's weird, right, that it's only doing it for these two dates. Um, it seems like an auto exist -ish kind of problem to me, but we're having kind of a debate on it right now um, on the uh, on my Patreon. We're talking about it. Um, and it can be solved, right? It can be solved by using a date table. So if I actually would recreate this, recreate this over here, like this, and then slap my date in there, make it not the hierarchy, right? So I've got that. And then if I just make one little tweak to my running total cost measure, I can say date, date, date. So I got the max of that versus the max of my table date. See, now you can see it's back to essentially what we had before. It's a little different because I've got every single date um, in this table versus what I have over here, you know, versus only the dates that are in that in that table. This one I have like January 9th, which I don't have in the table and I have a January 11th and 13th, 13th I don't have in the table, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, January 3rd, all of these kind of things. So that means, but this is ideally what we'd want to have happen over here. Um, is that that date filter would get ignored, but it doesn't, and it seems like it's sort of kind of like an auto exist issue to me because I have two filters on the same table, right? Because I've got my switch this back. Right. So I've got my two filters, one being coming from this slicer and one coming internally on the visual itself which is this date field that I have right there in the x-axis is also coming from table. So there's my two filters on one table. Um, and I, you know, there is no row. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's an interesting issue. So if anybody has an opinion on, on this um, and whether this is, is this an auto exist issue? Is this not an auto exist issue? How else do you explain this? Um, other than, hey, use a proper star schema. That kind of stuff. Um, be interested in your thoughts on it because I can't keep on kind of going back and forth on this. So anyway, a little sneak preview of some of the stuff that's going to end up in the book. Um, Dax for humans. Um, if you want to get in on the action, uh, you can always join my Patreon and uh, we're having a good time over there. So that is all I had for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.